Okay. Meeting call to order. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Here. Councilmember Chapman. Here. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. <laughs> We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following mm -hmm. manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 22, 2024, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. At this time, Mayor Moore would like to present checks on behalf of Joey Pilato and the Asbury Park Fishing Club. Thank you. Uh on March the 3rd was the 31st uh, fishing, Asbury Park Fishing Club. It's more than a flea market, it's the best uh, show on the Jersey coast. Uh, Joey Pilato has been running it for 31 years. Asbury Park Fishing Club is the oldest saltwater fishing club in the country. And he takes the gates and he gives them to charity. So Amy's going to read the letter. We have some recipients with us tonight that are going to come up and get the check. The Asbury Park Fishing Club held its 31st annual fishing show at the Berkeley Oceanfront Hotel on March 3rd. The successful event would not have been accomplished without the efforts of you, and the council continue to endorse our organization. Our membership appreciates this annual opportunity to showcase this historic hotel, our beautiful, our beautiful beachfront in the city of Asbury Park. Special thanks to Corey Lowe, Director of Group Sales, Steve Pilly, Director of Engineering, the owner of the hotel, his name is? Stuart Podolsky. And the staff of the Berkeley Oceanfront Hotel for accommodating our show. As, ex as an expression of our commitment to Asbury Park, it is with great pride that I present to the city council the following checks to the organizations that benefit the city. I'm going to say one thing, which you might have already said, I wasn't listening, but they turn these checks around for the nonprofit organizations in a week, week to 10 days, which is unheard of in Asbury Park. So kudos to. Joey Pilato for making um, all of these organi organizations a lot brighter and happier right now. First check goes to Asbury Park Little League. Second check is Asbury Park Boys and Girls Club. Woo! Third check is Big Brothers Big Sisters of Monmouth County. Fourth check is Cookville Food Bank. <coughs> Okay. 
I mean, if the entire council wants to come down and look at the photo, that's a good idea. And very quickly, Joey Pilato, Casey Pilato, and all the members of the Hasbury Park Fishing Club, thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're now on to special events applications. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this evening, there are 34 applications before you. Only one is new, and that would be for the Asbury Beer, Wine, and Spirits Festival on June 29th. Are there any questions on any of the applications? No. no. no thanks. But do me a favor. I got another check for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. We're now on to matters from City Council. Councilmember Bez Anderson. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Chapman. Yes, so on uh, March 21, from 10 to 11, we're hosting a coffee with the council person, and this one will be at the Social so Services Office at 801 Springwood Avenue at the Transportation Center. And I just want to remind everybody else, too, there's a DLA cleanup this Saturday at 9 o'clock at the boat ramp at Waterworks Park, 7th and Main Street. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. Nothing at this time. Thank, thank you. you. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Nothing. Thank you. Mayor Moore. No, thank you. Thank you. Matters from the city manager. Nothing, thank you. Thank you. Matters from the city attorney. And nothing from me either, Lisa. Thank you. Now on to public participation. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move to open. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation portion is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone, state your name and address for the record. And there will be a three minute time limit. Again, your name and address for the record. Thank you. My Mike, name. Mike, hold on just one second, Mike, okay. please. I know we have a big crowd. I know there's there can be difference of opinions, but there can be no cross conversations. If there's cross conversations, you're gonna be asked to leave. So let's everybody just Say what you have to say, be respectful, and everybody have a good evening. Thank you, Mike, go ahead. Sure, uh, Mike Sedano, 1000 4th Avenue. Hello, Council. Um, I'd uh, like to take a couple minutes just to summarize the letter that um, I uh, managed to distribute to you all. Uh, the subject being to amend the 1201 Memorial Avenue redevelopment plan. Uh, we urge you to permit vehicular access from Memorial Drive not 4th Avenue, as it's already stated to, to do. Um, while we as a concerned group of neighbors want to support a project that turns the empty lot into a thriving part of our community, we believe the access currently being considered onto 4th Avenue does not equitably distribute the new traffic, nor does it do enough to minimize the negative impact of that traffic into the west side. We recommend the access to these residences be changed to Memorial Drive. Our letter, signed by dozens of concerned citizens, looks at the situation from three distinct vantage points. Number one, pedestrian safety. Fourth Avenue is a street routinely crossed by school aid children and residents walking to the beach, adding potentially hundreds of vehicle trips on this already well-traveled uh, street is asking for more accidents and pedestrians will suffer. Number two, impacts on the surrounding neighborhoods. Every side street that crosses 4th Avenue will become a cut through as drivers look for Sunset, 3rd, 5th, or Asbury Avenues. Many of these intersections have no traffic lights. Accidents are bound to occur. Number three, 
Why deviate from the existing pattern of curb cuts on Memorial Drive? Memorial already has many businesses with curb cuts. Leaving 300 feet of Memorial Drive frontage without a curb cut presents the appearance of a fast traffic zone that will encourage speeding and dangerous driving. We are the directly impacted residents of the neighborhood. Therefore, we ask that you engage in a traffic study to provide you and us with data, which is the informed way to make this decision. We respectfully ask you to consider a study, let the public know the findings, and ultimately amend the redevelopment plan to orient vehicular access from Memorial Drive rather than from 4th or 5th Avenues. Even the developer is in agreement with this approach. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hold on a second, Matt. Uh, we have two of the city professionals here tonight will briefly answer some of your remarks. So we have Beth McManus, the planner, and James come on over and address the reasons why Fourth is chosen over Memorial. There's a hand mic over there if you need it also. We use these, I think. Yeah. Okay, you can use those, as long as everybody can hear it. I don't know if that hand mic is working. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, Identify yourself, Beth. I'm sorry, my name is Beth McManus. I'm one of the planning consultants working for the city. I'm planner at Kyle McManus Associates. Uh, as was referenced, the redevelopment plan currently calls for access not along Memorial Drive. The reason for that is there, there are a handful of reasons, but one overarching is typical in traffic planning policy and, and procedures. You typically see driveway access provided on lower order or lesser traffic streets, and that's exactly what the Memorial Plan redevelopment plan does. And part of the reason for that is uh, also for pedestrian safety, one of the uh, aspects that I think is anticipated here in the city is that not only is there significant uh, pedestrian uh, traffic along uh, Memorial Drive already, but that's anticipated to grow. And if you think about uh, zoning along this road, there's opportunities for additional development and redevelopment that will certainly increase pedestrianism along that street. And I think it's also important to consider some of the destinations that we see along that road, which include uh, the high school, which is certainly proximate to Memorial Drive. And we also have significant commercial uses, such as a grocery store, a little further down the street. And so these sidewalks are certainly used to access these important areas. Uh, additionally, I think it's important to consider the design of the site, and one of the aspects of the redevelopment plan is we have a very small setback along Memorial Drive versus a roughly 25-foot setback along 4th Avenue. And so by virtue of those different setbacks, the exit from the parking garage also creates a safer opportunity along 4th rather than Memorial because as you exit the building, you have approximately 25 feet to view who might be walking along the sidewalks. And so there's uh, almost no opportunity to create a conflict with a pedestrian along the sidewalk as you're immediately exiting the parking garage because you have that additional visibility. And so I think the design of the site and of the building also lends itself to the current access location. And I'm James Bonanno. I am the Director of Transportation for the city. Just to follow up on what Beth was talking about, you know, we do have some data that goes along with this analysis and this decision. Um, the DOT, New Jersey DOT, has a traffic count for Memorial Drive that has about an uh, average of 9,000, over 9,000 vehicles per day on Memorial Drive. From our own counts and studies, we do have traffic counts from Third Avenue, which is of a similar geometry and length and character. Uh, and those have about 4,000, 5,000 vehicles per day. So they're about half the amount of vehicles you have at Memorial Drive. We find that with between the setbacks of the building being zero uh, feet on Memorial Drive and 25 feet on Fourth, vehicles exiting and entering the site will have more opportunity to see pedestrians, bicycles, and other vehicles when exiting the site onto Fourth Avenue rather than Memorial Drive. Additionally, Memorial Drive will be, be restriped with protected bicycle lanes in the upcoming months. Um, if you put a, a driveway on Memorial Drive along with these protected bike lanes, 
bicyclists coming across, you know, blocked by traffic, might be able, not be able to see a car quickly coming up from Royal Drive into a parking, uh, parking lot or parking deck. So we feel it is safer for pedestrians, bicycles, and drivers to position this driveway on 4th Avenue rather than Memorial Drive. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Matt? <clears throat> Matt Daniels, 1026 Monroe Avenue. I am here to present what could be called Monmouth County for Palestine's resolution to you, but I believe it would be fair to say that even uh, the residents of Asbury Park that are here, uh, maybe on the side, back in as well. Uh, and a quick other thing, uh, I am comforted uh, by the amount of inclusion to different types of, uh, different races, uh, creeds, uh, sexes of humans in this. And I also want to state that we will, we know that you won't be voting on this, and so we are more than willing to uh, and want to work with uh, the city council. If you see something or want something extra in there or something that fits uh, more of the ball that's conducive to success for this. Uh, and so without further ado, um, uh, this is a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and Israel and resumption of full humanitarian aid, whereas the mayor and the city council of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey, recognize the importance of peace and security for all communities and nations around the world, regardless of nationality, ethnic, or religious affiliations. And whereas the mayor and the city council of Asbury Park advocate for the safety, dignity, freedom, and quality of all people, regardless of religion, race, or nationality, and whereas the mayor and the city council of Asbury Park recognize that all human life is precious, and whereas on October 7th, 2023, a violent attack by Hamas claimed the lives of over 12,000 men, or sorry, 1,200 men, excuse me, women and children in Israel, with 240 more taken hostage, and whereas since then, over 40,000 Palestinians have been killed, including 326 health workers, 136 UN aid workers, and well over 70,000 civilians injured. And whereas lives continue to be at imminent risk of death if a ceasefire is not achieved without delay. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council of Asbury Park, New Jersey, hopefully join with our representatives of other cities and calling on our president, our senators, our congressional members to demand an immediate ceasefire of the violence in Gaza and Israel, immediate, uh, sorry, the immediate delivery of humanitarian aid and a safe return of all remaining hostages, prisoners, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to the offices of NJ Congressional Representatives, Senators, and the United States President, Joe Biden, urging them to take immediate action. Thank you for your time. I know that you'll be hearing a lot more, uh, but we just thank you for your consideration in this, and we look forward to working with you on this. Thank you. My name's Andrea Levine. I'm not comfortable giving my address. I live in Asbury Park. I'd be happy to give that to you afterward. Would that be fine? Thank yes. you. We acknowledge that this land upon which we gather is part of the traditional territory of the Lenni Lenape. We acknowledge the settler colonization of being here as we're gathered right now. We wish our Muslim neighbors Ramadan Kareem and Assalamu Alaikum. I'm here on behalf of Jersey Shore Food Not Bombs and, Joyce, and Jewish Voice for Peace. Today is Global Day of Action for Palestine. We are here to demand that Asbury Park City Council move forward with a resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza. Israeli Holocaust and genocide scholar and professor Raz Siegel called this a textbook case of genocide back in October. We are five months into this and still trying to convince people of this fact. As the, child of, as the grandchild of Holocaust survivors myself, I know the weight of genocide has not only on survivors, but the transgenerational post-traumatic stress passed on. Every single member of my grandpa, my grandpa Jack's family, including his wife and children, were, ex excuse me, his first wife, not my grandma, and children were exterminated in Poland. For my grandma Edna, only she and her sister and her cousin survived the Holocaust. The rest of their relatives and communities were exterminated. They burned in the burning center of Kelmno. They were forced to dig their own graves. My grandma Edna and her sister were imprisoned in a Nazi ammunition factory 
which is a slave labor camp in Skarżysko Kamiana in Poland. She and her sister were 10 and 12 years old, making bullets and packing boxes for the Nazis, the same bullets used to kill their community. My grandpa Benny and Grandma Rose's families were exterminated. Grandma Rose was in Auschwitz and Stutthof camps, building landing strips for the war effort. Her first husband, not Grandpa Benny, was shot in front of her. Both grandpas never spoke about what they saw, so I literally have no idea of what happened to them. Last August, I saw with my own eyes the ammunition factory in Skarżysko Kamiana in Poland. I walked in Auschwitz concentration camp and I saw their pre-home wars in Lodz ghetto. They saw the unimaginable and thank God they survived and I can be here today to tell you their story. I am anti-war and anti-occupation and support the end of occupation of Palestine. It is out of, not in spite of, my own heritage and being a descendant of a Holocaust and genocide survivors that I refuse to allow their tragedy and the sheer horrors that they survived to be weaponized against the Palestinian people. It is heinous that politicians, agencies, synagogues, Jewish groups, and Jewish individuals use the experience of my family to justify actual known war crimes and actual genocide in the name of protecting Jewish people. We must not be influenced by people and their agendas when they are functioning out of trauma and blaming the wrong group of people in order to maintain power and land. The Palestinians had nothing to do with the horrors of the Jewish Holocaust. I went to the West Bank myself okay. in 2008. Hey, Ma'am, your time's up. Finish your sentence. No, finish okay. your sentence. She's going to finish my statement. I went to the West Bank in 2008, and I have family in Israel. I saw both sides of the apartheid wall. I asked Mohammed outside of Janine refugee camp, what can I do? He said, go home okay. and tell your country okay. that we are not terrorists. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Ali Geiger Kana. Can you please speak closer to the microphone? We can't hear you. Hello, my name is Ali Geiger Kana. I'm a resident of Northwest Asbury Park and a proud voter. I'll gladly give you my address privately after this. I'm going to wrap it up here. What can Americans do? He said, go home to your country and tell them we are not terrorists. So 16 years later, the same length of time that Gaza has been under the military blockade and under an open air prison, I repeat again, Palestinians are human beings with families who deserve to have dignity. They deserve to, have, to celebrate Ramadan and pray right now. They deserve to have food to break fast during their holy month of Ramadan. My dear friend Asma messaged me this morning saying that she went to Jenin yesterday to see a doctor and she had to run to her car because Israeli occupation forces started shooting. Take a stand here in Asbury Park and join the many cities and countries that are calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Be on the right side of history. Uphold our values, your values. If you were in Rafa or Khan Yunus and your children were being indiscriminately bombed inside of a hospital and starved, what would you want the politicians in Asbury Park, New Jersey to do with you, do for you? Knowing that those bombs being dropped were made here in America and if the world could do something, it could bring lasting peace to your family. You have the opportunity now. It is no more. What would you do if you lived during American chattel slavery? Would you have been an abolitionist or would you have or what would you have done if you had lived during the Holocaust? Would you have resisted the Nazis? Support a ceasefire now. We stand in solidarity with people across the world, at least eight silent genocides, nine if you currently include the ongoing trans genocide in Congo, Sudan, Ethiopia, Nagorno-Karabakh, West Papua New Guinea, ethnic genocide of Uyghurs in China, Myanmar, all hate crimes against black and indigenous people worldwide, queer people, including our trans siblings and trans youth, and all oppressed people. We must take action towards the liberation of all people. We demand a permanent ceasefire. We demand an end to the blockade of Gaza. We demand an end to the military occupation of Palestine. Um, I uh, am... A practicing Jew, and every Friday night I sing Shalom Rav. It is a Jewish prayer for peace, and this is my favorite commentary out of the Siddur I read every Friday night. It is called an appendix to the vision of peace. It is by Yehuda Amichai. Don't stop after beating the swords into plowshares. Don't stop. Go on beating and make musical instruments out of them. Whoever wants to make more war again will have to turn them into plowshares first. 
there's further commentary that what happened once upon a time happens every single day. And the only way we can possibly combat that is to hold hands and march forward. This is in the holy book that I read every Friday night. And I cannot read that without asking you to support a ceasefire. 13,000 children have passed and I don't know what I'm supposed to do but I can ask you to do something. My taxes as a tax paying citizen are being used to bomb innocent civilians and I simply cannot remain silent about that. And I ask that you support a ceasefire. Well. Thank you. Hello there, Council. My name is Josh. I live on Sewell Avenue. I can give you my full address later. I've been an Asbury Park resident for six years. I've also been a healthcare professional for 10 years. First from being an EMT, then an ER tech, and now a respiratory therapist. I've seen a lot in my line of work, but nothing compares to the amount of desolation and pain I see countless news reports and videos coming out of Gaza every single day, recorded by Gazans themselves and Palestinians themselves and how much pain and torture they're going under. No clean water, no food, no clean medical supplies, no oxygen, no blood to give, no anesthesia to get the thousands of dying and wounded going through surgery a relief from their pain. As a medical professional, that is literal, the literal definition of hell. I don't know what else you could describe it as. Over 4,000, over 40,000 dead in little, little over four months. 12,000 of that is children. Again, that just breaks every single soul, every single fiber of my being to hear that, working with children every single day at the job that I do. All because of a callous and spiteful government in Israel who chooses to do this for their own game, all because Palestinians choose to be defined against occupation and literal apartheid. For the sake of Palestinians clinging to life and surviving, for the sake of the aid workers working tirelessly to aid, their, to aid the people there, for people of all faiths, Jews, Christians, Muslims, still living there in Gaza and in Palestine. <sighs> for the dignity of the city of Asbury Park and the council, for citizens like myself here, who are proud to call this my hometown, my, my place where I live for such a long time and I want to continue to be proud of living here. For the sake of all humanity, sign this, look at this resolution. Cease fire now, it is the only logical and humane option to pick. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rupa Dasgupta. I live in the Steinbeck building. Can you repeat your name? Rupa Dasgupta. Thank you. I live in the Steinbeck building and I have been an Asbury resident for 12 years. There's little in our world that is black and white. So much about the region of Israel and Palestine, its history, its people, and generations of conflict cannot possibly be re reduced to such simple terms. If displacing hundreds of thousands of Palestinians to make a home for Jews was the wrong thing to do, what would have been the right thing? What does the world owe a historically oppressed people? How long does a statute of limitations on a piece of land last? The things that are black and white are that collective punishment that is the indiscriminate murder and dehumanization of Palestinian civilians as a revenge for the actions of Hamas is not only wrong, but a war crime as defined by the Geneva Conventions. Bombing hospitals and universities is wrong. Starving a populace, withholding aid, and then firing upon those desperately seeking food is wrong and simply cruel beyond imagination. It seems as if the current Israeli leadership's aim is to wipe out the Palestinian people entirely because they know that anyone who survives will be radicalized against Israel with every fiber of their being, and rightfully so. But do you know who else they'll be radicalized against? Us, the United States, Israel's greatest ally. How many more 9-11s will we experience in the future as a result of our aiding and abetting a genocidal regime? And who ultimately will pay for these crimes? Not us, but our children. Our children, whom we have already burdened with so much. We cannot keep forcing our children to pay for our sins. It is the responsibility of our generation to fix this, to persuade those in power to do the right thing, and turn away from this current path that leads to nothing but more death, destruction, and needless suffering. At the very least, we have to be able to look our children in the eyes and tell them that we tried, and that we used our voices to say not in our name 
and to Mendes Hughes for now. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening, Doris Lynn. Um, I live in Freehold Township, but I am here in Asbury Park almost every Sunday with Food Not Bombs. We share uh, food and groceries, uh, donated items with the public. Um, so I, I have a connection with Asbury Park that I feel deeply. Um, I urge you to support this ceasefire resolution. The history between Israel and Palestine is complicated. But what is happening right now is not complicated. Killing 30,000, more than 30,000 civilians is genocide. It's not complicated to take a stand against war crimes. It is not complicated to take a stand against genocide. International human rights groups, the United Nations, Doctors Without Borders, Amnesty International, Oxfam are all calling for a ceasefire. I urge you to stand on the right side of history and support a resolution for a ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sarah Marie. Is this good? Uh, I'm from Ocean Township. I am also Palestinian. My kids are Palestinian. To sum up 75 plus years of oppression and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people in just three minutes. I will start by saying this. Israel is a settler colonial state whose existence depends on the destruction and total elimination of Palestinians. I'm in a constant state of shock and disbelief that we have to continuously beg and plead that the people of Gaza and occupied Palestine deserve basic human rights. They don't have water, they don't have electric, they don't have food. There are women having C-sections with no anesthesia, no hospitals, no proper medical equipment, no medicine. Yet people can still sleep at night as if nothing is happening, as if this is okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. Is it not okay for you if you're black, if you're white, if you're purple, if you're orange, if you're green, if you're blue, it doesn't matter. We all should have equal rights. We should all have equal rights. I don't understand how people justify the killing of 40,000 people, 13,000 kids. Those are my kids. Those are my kids. Those are our children. They're your children. 17, over 17,000 children have been orphaned. I don't know how I'm supposed to continue. How? When this just keeps escalating and getting worse every single day. You were talking about deliberate starvation. What year is this? I don't understand. We are in a battle with the most terrifying type of people, the type of people that feel joy when a Palestinian child is murdered, the type of people that look at others as second class. If you're in this room and you think that there's anybody that is less than you, I'm so sorry for you. I pray for you. I pray for your healing because it's not okay. And I'm sorry that somebody taught you that. I'm sorry that you were conditioned to hate. It's not normal. It's not okay. We are witnessing a genocide in real time. We're seeing the raw images and videos and we're responding like any normal human being would respond in shock and disbelief and outrage and in devastation Finish. due to the lack of humanity Finish presented by our so-called leaders. Thank you. Nonetheless, my last sentence, I want to end by saying that we will okay. always remain hopeful and we will you never ahead. give up the fight for justice. Free Palestine! Free Palestine! I thank you for 
I'm going to tell everybody, if people continue to go over the three minutes I say, finish the sentence, and they go on for a paragraph or two, I'm going to say three minutes and you're done with it. So let's, you see the long line of people, let's be respectful and give everybody a chance to speak. Thank you. Hello, my name is Emily. I'm a resident of Madawan, not Asbury Park. Where? My voice Emily shakes. A resident of Madawan. My voice shakes because I'm Jewish and I was raised in a Zionist synagogue. We had an Israeli flag up on our altar. We were raised with fear and it's understandable why we're fearful because when you're a part of a group that has been attempted to be wiped from the planet, that's been in diaspora for so long. It's a pain that's been carried for so many generations. 2,000 years, right? But when I got a bit older and I was in my late teens, I'm in my early 40s now, I started to notice that on the news, every time I saw there was a conflict in Israel, a conflict, I'll put in quotes, that the death toll for the Palestinians was so much higher than it was for the Israelis. And this very simple statistic got me questioning what was going on. And I started to learn more. My mind changed. And then the greatest heartbreak, my Jewish community, I no longer had that home. And I grew up in Iowa. There's not a lot of us there. We had to stick together. But I lost all my people. My mom called me a self-hating Jew because I chose to love and see my fellow human beings and so much love to my Palestinian sibling who just spoke, oh my God, I have a 10 year old and I've been in agony trying to figure out how to teach him about his people and his history and extracting this imperialist. And what I mean by that is, you know, countries coming in and taking over a land that belongs to another people and shoving them out and trying to teach them what it is to be Jewish without having that confused with our identity and who we are. And I'm talking as a Jewish person because our identity has been used to justify what's happening in Palestine, but with everything that we are, you know, we are taught as children tikkun olam to heal the world, and we need to heal the world. We need to heal our relationships with our Palestinian siblings. My Ancestry that's Jewish is Sephardic. That means that we found refuge in countries that were, you know, under the rule of our Muslim and Arab siblings. We found <coughs> safety there. And this relationship was divided when Europeans began to colonize and take advantage of that. So we seek to heal this. Please pass this resolution. The ceasefire resolution to stand with the right side of history, stand against apartheid. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ash. I'll give you the legal information later, but I'm a resident of Asbury. I come to you asking for you to consider the resolution that over 60% of Americans would agree with which would be a fully drafted ceasefire resolution that he told you about. I find it extremely unjust that my tax dollars are funding the unnecessary killings of people in another country. And it is shameful when our own government will not consider what the majority of our population wants, which is the ceasing of the violent and brutal killings, the manufactured famine, and the unlawful imprisonments of an entire population of men, women, and children, as well as aid to be sent to the roughly 5 billion starving and recently homeless Palestinians who are left. The death toll has surpassed 40,000 and 70,000 are injured. And if you stand for democracy, then you will stand with us. I believe in a fair and just system, even if that is what we are not experiencing right now. I believe there are still people in law who wish to represent the wishes of the people. And I hope that you will join the single New Jersey representative who calls for ceasefire, because as far as I know, there's only been one. I have met people who are Palestinian and who have fled to America in search of safety and a better life because this is not start October 7th. 
The Israeli occupation of the Palestinian people started in 1948 when Israel decided to become a country and plant its roots in the already inhabited land that was Palestine. And after centuries of oppression and killings and continued stealing of lands, October 7th is simply what garnered the attention specifically because of the Hamas retaliation. Now Israel admits that many of the Israel deaths that day were friendly fire. But like all gross injustice, no matter what happened, Israel and her own country alike need a scapegoat. Palestine has no military. They cannot defend themselves, and any act against their oppressor will be deemed as terrorism. I will never forget the story of Hind, the five-year-old girl whose family was shot by Israel's soldiers. Hind was locked in the car, surrounded by her dead family members for days until she passed from starvation. Her and her cousin, who survived the initial attack, called an ambulance, but that ambulance that was dispatched to help them was bombed, and they all lost their lives as well. And every time I see a child who has died of hunger in Gaza, who shriveled corpses look like Halloween decorations because their skin has been shrink wrapped to their little bones, I feel sick, and I am outraged that my tax dollars are funding this, and I am outraged that our government will not listen to us, and I am outraged that people are blindly choosing the side of the oppressor. A member of our own US military could not handle this injustice. It sickened him to his very core, and we lost Aaron Bushnell, an active duty member of our Air Force, because he felt the only thing left to do was to participate in a most extreme form of protest, which being self-immolation. Bushnell would rather end his life in the name of the cause than continue living bearing the weight and knowledge of the suffering of Palestinian people. So please help us end the suffering by considering the ceasefire resolution that we will be handing to you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to make sure, like, I can leave my information just for later. Is that okay? No, we need a name and an address. Okay. All right. So, my name is Anaya Preston, and I'm a resident of Asbury Park. And for reasons regarding my safety, I will not I didn't get your one. name. I didn't Anaya start the Preston. clock yet. What's your name? Anaya Preston. Thank you. Great. Yes, and I will not disclose where I work in the name of my safety. However, what I will say is that I am a college graduate. And I've seen the horrors of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia after October 7th, as well as being an intern of a congressional staff. Again, will not save my information because I am aware that I have received death threats as well as doxing threats. But in the five months since I've, since I've seen everything that has happened, as much as I have grieved for many Israeli lives that are lost on October 7th, it does not justify the ongoing ethnic erasure of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank, especially during the holy months of Islam. I do not need to be Jewish or Muslim to have a solid ground on my morals for how, for how I have watched my Muslim classmates and colleagues from just be harassed violently, spat on, receive death threats for an incident that they had no part of other than watching their families die. I protested with them, sat in educational workshops with them, painted Palestinian, Palestinian motifs with them, and are all sharing the community grief and fear of academic McCarthyism. I'm still dealing with that now as I have graduated. The last part being is true because many of my classmates involved of the Students for, for Justice in Palestine were not only suspended during final season, but their organizations were frozen, all because we have asked to divest from Zion extremist funding. And in my short time of interning as congressional staff, the war has, this war and, is, and everything that is going on within Palestine has burnt out nearly all of us as intern teams. As we fear constituents cursing us out of our name, crying in hopelessness, and calling day and night to the point where I remember 20 constituents by name and address, yelling at us for our uselessness regarding that many of, our, many of my staff are on their side, yet we cannot say anything out of fear of being fired. And just this past Thursday, I received a call from one of my constituents asking why, of all, of all places to even work, I'm working with someone that is complicit to genocide. I did not have the heart to, or the flexibility to tell her that out of all the 70 jobs that I, apl I have applied to, it was the only job that could ever give me something. And if I quit then, it would be a loss of my path of career in policy and advocacy, but to be unemployed in an already disastrous job market. I have everything to lose if I lost the only job that has said yes to me. And so I cried to myself, and as much as I wish to be the only guiding hope to my constituents, I know fully well that no one is listening to the nearly 2,000 calls per week about a ceasefire not just from Muslims and Arabs, but from Jewish people, Christians, veterans, children, and other races that are called from, from across New Jersey. All that have said, not in their name, not on their taxes, and not targeting their family. And not on mine either. Thank you.
Hello, uh, my name is Jacqueline Blair. Uh, my Hebrew name is Eliana Toba, and I live in Belmar, New Jersey. Um, and I'm urging the council to pass a ceasefire resolution. Um, just to address some of the rougher edges, I understand anyone who would want the return of their loved ones and safeties, but you cannot bomb your way to peace. Jewish liberation will not come from the oppression of Palestinians. It has been made very clear that the only way to get a hostage exchange is done is through ceasefire negotiations. All human life is precious, and both the Israeli hostages and the Palestinian hostages deserve their freedom. I believe everyone has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, as outlined in our own constitution. And if these rights are inalienable and God-given, like, God, like the document suggests, surely it transcends borders and nationalities as well. Surely some of us were not created more equal than others. The continued and spreading violence concerns me deeply on a personal level. Seeing IOF soldiers spraying students at Columbia with skunk water on an American soil was unsettling to say the least. These are actions we must condemn on the most certain terms so that they do not continue to be perpetuated. Please forgive me if I butcher this, but Yazan al Kafarna, a 10 year old boy, was starved to death. There were pictures of him and I don't want this to happen to my 10-year-old cousin or to anyone at all. Residents of this country who understand the criminal levels of food waste that occur here know that we have enough for everyone if we just manage our resources properly and fairly. And from a more pragmatic lens, Asbury Park is a beach town. And in the first 60 days of the Zionist bombardment of Gaza, more carbon emissions were produced by this aggression than the 20 most climate vulnerable nations produce in a year. If we add the infrastructures built by both parties, it's more than 33. I've been watching the ice caps in the Arctic thin. Last week, it got so bad in March that the methane was spewing out beneath the thin fractured ice above the edge of the east entire East Siberian shelf. It's not lost on me how balmy it's been for this season. I love Asbury Park and I don't want to see it underwater. It would be really hard to get pizza at Johnny Max if the coastline floods. Humanity's future depends on our collective efforts to stop all war. We can keep banning single-use plastic items and it's a good start, but we need to dismantle the entire war machine and dis establish a peace economy if we would like to survive as a community or as a species in general. Thank you for your time. Ceasefire now, free Palestine. My name is Alexandra, and um, I live in Belmar, but I've lived in Asbury for eight years before that, and I work in Asbury for, well, it's gonna be 10 years now. And um, every day I wake up and try to do the most loving thing I can, and that is why I'm here. Um, I don't know what I can say that hasn't already been said, yelled, begged, pleaded, and I have zero faith in colonial systems and governments. I'm solely here for the people and the land of Palestine and to do anything possible to get this genocide to stop. It is an attack on children, women, men, animals, land, mother earth, spirit, source, God, goddess, any, any word you want to call it. It is an attack on life itself. We want Asbury to be on the anti-genocide side of history. We need a ceasefire resolution. Free Palestine, love Palestine. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Aaron and I'm coming here from East Orange, New Jersey and I am with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. 40 years ago, my father spoke out against apartheid in South Africa, calling for his university, Stony Brook University, to divest from all companies supporting apartheid. It is that same desire for justice for the 30,000 dead in Gaza whose spirits cry out for justice. The tens of thousands of children who are starving to death, watching their very bodies waste away. The tens of thousands of women who have to give birth without anesthesia, the most gruesome of fashion not seen since before modern medicine. What inhumanity could inspire such torture against an innocent people? Uh, so I ask you of the council to listen to the words of those before me, the words of the masses, and to stand beside justice. For you have two choices 
to stand beside us and call for justice where you will be remembered for that noble stand, or to stand against us and ignore us and to be forgotten among the many oppressors of history who have, whose names have long since passed from historical record. And most importantly, you will have to explain to your children and your children's children why you could not stand for justice when the cry rang out to you. Why you cannot see the poor Palestinian children whose skin, who barely have muscles on their bones, crying for food. The babies crying for milk for mothers who are perished under rubble. I ask you, why are we deliberating this? Why do we feel the need to deliberate the humanity of a people suffering under occupation and war? And thus, I, it pains me so much to feel the need to defend the humanity of a people a thousand miles away, but here is what our society has come down to. And thus, I end my speech with this. Long live the Palestinian people. Free the Palestinian people and justice for the Palestinian people. My name is Michael Green. I live at 300 Emory Street. I'm a 60 year resident of Asbury Park on and off. My children come here and live here regularly and they're here for the summer. From the river to the sea, from Hamas to free thee, Free thee. We live in the best place in the whole world, Asbury Park. We have gay, we have straight, we have Christians, we have Jews. We don't have hate. We don't allow hate. Hamas doesn't belong here, and nothing like that belongs here. We belong with people that would annihilate us. Gay, my son's gay, they kill him. There are plenty of people here, gay, straight, not disagree. Power, anger, we don't have that here. I have a hurt heart. I have a hurt heart to even hear of an agenda like this. We are here to make sure that Asbury Place is a place, Park, excuse me, Asbury Park is a place where a man can go down to the pool, where a man can go do what he wants to do, or a woman, where we have the freedom and we don't have to worry about someone having an agenda on their way of life. And the way of Hamas would kill and destroy all non-believers. That's all I have to say. Hello, my name is Dan Rosette. I'm a resident of East Brunswick, but I am the Director of Community Relations for the Jewish Federation uh, in the heart of New Jersey, uh, which represents the Jewish community in Greater Middlesex and Monmouth counties. I would like to thank the Council for respecting free speech for all and for supporting the democratic right of all citizens to express their opinion. I'm a facts guy, so a, f a few facts. On October 6th, there was a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. On October 7th, this all changed when Hamas massacred over 1,300 Israelis, violently raped and murdered countless women, carried out hundreds of executions, beheadings, and kidnappings. Sorry, I allowed all of you to talk. Sorry. I said there'll be no cross conversations. Everybody's been respectful so far. Please let it continue or else people are going to be asked to leave the room. Thank you. On October 6th, there was a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. On October 7th, this all changed when Hamas massacred over 1,300 Israelis, violently raped and murdered countless women, carried out hundreds of executions, beheadings, and kidnappings of Israelis of all backgrounds, religions, and ages. Failing to recognize and remember this reality outright ignores how this conflict began and ignores accountability for Hamas's action. Saying that October 7th, the October 7th attack is a result of 75 years of occupation ignores facts. In 1948, there were no disputed lands. Israeli territory was within UN recognized borders in a small part of the greater Jewish ancestral homeland. By calling that occupation, you do not support a two state solution deny Israel's right to exist, and say Israelis deserved what happened to them. Promoting misinformation and dismissing facts as propaganda despite irrefutable evidence verified by major media outlets and the United Nations is a denial of truth and threatens Jews in this country and in our local communities. 
And most of all, it does not do anything to solve the real problem. Go to saturday.october, sorry, saturday-october-7.com to see for yourself. Be warned, the contexts are extremely graphic. The truth can be difficult to handle because it may challenge beliefs, perspectives, or self-image. Facts matter. The Jewish community affirms and encourages peace-minded people of, of good faith and goodwill to affirm that the suffering of all innocent people, including Palestinians, of course, at the hands of Hamas is very real and tragic. Hamas must be held accountable for the current humanitarian crisis. The fate of Palestinians in Gaza is at the hands of Hamas leaders based in Qatar, far removed from the fighting, living in luxury, putting their own interests ahead of the people of Gaza. Where is the outrage and protest? This war ends now if Hamas returns all hostages and surrenders, immediately solving the humanitarian crisis. War kills and harms civilians with catastrophic effect on the health and well-being of all involved. This war can end now if Hamas returns all hostages and surrenders. Thank you. Thank you. Please, guys. Hi, my name is Mark Litch. I'm nearby in Ocean Township. I've had a long relationship with Asbury Park, both working and living in it. Um, I don't fear retaliation because I don't have a job worth keeping. Um, <laughs> fortunate for me. I have been involved somewhat in, in the occupation going back to the PLO in the early days of uh, the occupation. And I just heard something here I couldn't believe that. Um, first of all, two words, there's two words you have to know. Illegal occupation. It's that simple. Illegal. We're here in the municipal. Illegal occupation. They will blur it with some kind of Jewish mythology that they hijacked from 3,000 years ago. These are Zionist European colonizers. Yes. It is that simple. Um, many of our parents and grandparents fought fascism, and this is the same fight. And if you think it's not a local issue, when you do your budgets and see the kind of money that we're spending there, and can probably go right next door to Deal, New Jersey, and, and look at the profits. Because many of the profiteers are who lives here. I kid you not. Illegal occupation is all you need to know. Geneva 5 states very specifically that any occupant, and this was written to the Jews of the Holocaust, any occupied people, it is not only your right to resist, it is your duty to resist. Geneva 5, illegal occupation. When they come here to muddy the waters and talk about, oh, we had a ceasefire, that's baloney. Was there a ceasefire when the fascists walked into Al-Aqsa Mosque and massacred people? In a mosque. In a mosque. They're bombing churches. They don't care. They simply don't care. And it's not going to happen on my dime. Thank you, folks. Hi, my name is Arden Jacetti. I will disclose my uh, address later, but I'm a resident of Howell, New Jersey. Um, like many people here have already said, since the events of October 7th, 2023, about 100 Palestinians are reported to have been killed by the IOF every single day. Even more are injured and even more go unreported because they are trapped under rubble of their homes that have been destroyed. They die from bombs, they die from starvation, dehydration, disease, the list goes on. And they are dying from all of these things because, and I want to make this very clear, I'm talking about the Israeli government, not the people. 
I believe people are innocent. It is the government we are talking about. The Israeli government has blocked aid trucks from entering Gaza. They have bombed hospitals, they have bombed schools, they have bombed any place where it is safe for these innocent people to reside. They were ran out of their homes, they were told to go south. The IOF bombed where they were told to go. They went south again and again and again and again until there was no south left to go to. Rafa, the most southern part of Gaza, became the most populated place in all of the world for a few days. The people of Palestine were told that they would be safe in Rafa. And then the Israeli government bombed Rafa. Most of the people that are dying are children. And I mean, I don't know for sure, but I don't think children can join terrorist groups. It is clear that there is indeed a genocide happening against the Palestinian people. I don't know of a single circumstance, a single world, a single universe where a genocide of any people is a good thing. I don't know how that can be a solution. So please, please, I urge for a ceasefire now, now. Um, my name is Danielle Ochola, and I'm not a resident of Asbury, I'm a resident of Howell. Um, I am not here today because I am Palestinian, but rather because I am Kenyan. For those who don't know, Kenya is a beautiful country in East Africa that has produced cultural and political exports such as Lupita Nyong'o, Barack Obama, and some of the fastest people in the world. In 1888, Britain began the colonial occupation of the land my ancestors have inhabited for centuries, just as they have in occupied Palestine and stayed there until 1963 when they fo were forced out by indigenous Kenyans rightfully claiming our independence. During the Mau Mau uprising beginning in October of 1952 and lasting until December 1959, 20,000 indigenous Kenyans were slaughtered and more than one million were detained in concentration camps for the crime of being Kenyan and claiming their indigenous land, freedom, and rights. I see many similarities between the Kenyan struggle for independence and the Palestinian struggle for independence. The drink known as English British tea and enjoyed by many every morning and evening is actually grown in the Rift Valley of Kenya by laborers who never see half of the profits they bring to European and American corporations. Just as Ka'ak al-Quds, a Palestinian sesame bread, and Diwali, a Palestinian stuffed grape leaf dish, is claimed by Israeli settlers as their own. Just as Israeli soldiers post bragging inside the homes of dead and displaced Palestinian women, exposing their private garments and their commitment to their modesty and haya, Kenyan women were brutally raped and molested and tortured in the name of defeating an uprising seen as savage and unfounded by their British colonizers. I stand before you asking for your support of a ceasefire, not only as a Kenyan, but as a human and someone who has enjoyed the beautiful shores of Asbury Park, my favorite beach since before I could even remember. Ceasefire now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lauren Bycroft. I'm a resident of Neptune, and both my husband and I have worked for several years in Asbury Park. I will not accept that this is complicated. Murder, cruelty, torture, and starvation are not complicated concepts. They are the starkest, most cartoonishly obvious examples of evil, of wrongs to be fought full-throatedly and with everything you have. This is not just about the murder of over 30,000 Palestinians or the displacement of over 1.5 million. It is about the destruction of infrastructure, mosques, churches, hospitals, banks, and records. This is not just an attempt to annihilate Palestinians through genocide, but to wipe them from history, to make them a footnote, a whisper. But these crimes are not a whisper. They are not rumor. They are carried out in broad daylight with our tax dollars and our comfort and complicity. We are taking part in the violent erasure of an entire people due to centuries of Islamophobia and for the purpose of tourist destinations and the harvesting of natural resources. These horrific acts of evil are photographed, recorded, and shared as widely across the internet as a family vacation. I put my child to bed at night and watch videos of Palestinian children voraciously eating grass out of, grass out of desperation and hunger. Their limbs amputated without anesthesia, their cries for mama and dada as they kneel before their lifeless bodies. 
This is not the fault of Hamas. Hamas does not force the IOF to indiscriminately detain, torture, and murder men, women, and children who have nothing to do with their government and are simply trying to live a life like all of us. You learn about the Holocaust as a child and you cannot fathom the banality and in casualness of evil. We have all consumed stories of World War II and supposed or hoped that we would be brave enough to be part of the solution, to be the good guys. History is now, the chapters are being written now. Calling for a ceasefire is the bare minimum and every person owes that minimum to Palestine. These are people, they deserve their humanity. It doesn't have to be proved. Just because this is happening half a world away to people who live differently than you, pray differently, look different, it does not excuse you from giving a shit. Work with these organizers, sign the resolution, ceasefire now, Palestine hara, free Palestine. <laughs> My name is Juno Snyder, and I'm a resident of Ocean Township. I don't have any particular connection to Palestine. I'm not Palestinian, I'm not Muslim, I don't have any particular connections to Israel, I'm not Israeli, I'm not Jewish, so why the hell am I up here? I am up here because I am a human being. I have a pulse, I have a heartbeat, and I do not stand with genocide. There is a website online, it's called Queering the Map. This is a website where people from all around the world can share their stories of queerness. As a queer person, I would like to read some of the excerpts from Gaza. I don't know how long I will live, so I just want this to be my memory here before I die. I am not going to leave my home, come what may. My biggest regret is not kissing this one guy. He died two days back. We had told how much we liked each other and I was too shy to kiss last time. He died in the bombing. I think a big part of me died too and soon I will be dead. I will kiss you in heaven. I've always imagined you and me sitting out in the sun, hand in hand, free at last. We spoke of all the places we would go if we could, yet you are gone now. If I had known that bombs raining down on us would take you from me, I would have gladly told the world how I adored you more than anything. I'm sorry I was a coward. This is where I first fell for you. It was 2021, the last major Israeli bombardment on Gaza. You never knew you were the reason that I first listened to my favorite bands or watched Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Everything comes back to you. Now you are a student abroad, and Israeli occupation bombs may take everyone and everything you ever loved away. Your mom, your home, your memories. I am so sorry the world failed you. That your mom, sister, best friends, everything is lost in this genocide. Those were three individual people of the thousands that live in Gaza. Their stories are being... Are, erased, their heritage is being erased. This is not just a genocide of people, it is a genocide of heritage and history. I ask, no, I beg for Asbury Park to be on the right side of history, to demand a ceasefire. When I watch a video of a baby with a broken leg, I think of my baby cousin when she was just a baby. When I hear about women having C-sections without anesthesia, I think of somebody I knew who had a C-section and how painful that must have been for her even with anesthesia. Imagine without anesthesia. Women in Gaza do not even have the right for menstrual hygiene products. There are no pads in Gaza. There are no tampons in Gaza. They are using bits of cloth just to give themselves some strand of dignity. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lisa Karasik. I live in Ocean Township, but my family has a long history in Asbury Park. I work for the Jewish Federation, representing all Jews of every ideology across Monmouth and Middlesex County. There's a ceasefire proposal on the table now. According to major news outlets such as Reuters, CNN, Al Jazeera, and many others, Israel agreed to that proposal a week ago. Hamas has not. Just yesterday, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the following, that the news is not reporting that 
the, the ceasefire on the table now has built into it that if Hamas would simply release women wounded and elderly at this time, then they can build on that. So the question is, why is Hamas holding on to this ceasefire proposal? And the question is, where is the outrage for that? If Hamas thinks so little of its own people that it's declining to accept this proposal, it raises a lot of questions. As to the um, civilian casualties, we mourn every innocent life lost. There is no if, and, or but about that. Each one is tragic. Uh, John Spencer, who is chair of the Urban Warfare Studies at West Point and served for 25 years as a U.S. infantry soldier, including two tours in Iraq, says that Israel does more than any other nation in history to avoid and prevent civilian casualties with weaponry, warnings, and more. Hamas doesn't let its own citizens into its 400-some miles of tunnels to use as shelter. Where is the outrage for that? Hamas uh, locates its operations in hospitals, mosques, schools, and now refugee centers. Where is the outrage for that? Hamas has a history and it continues to use its people as human shields. And we agree it is tragic. Every innocent life lost is tragic. There are Hamas rockets that have killed countless Palestinians as well. Um, and, I, and I would like to say regarding the occupation question that Israel left, and I'm not the, the, the most updated on the, the year, but I think it was 2005 or 2006, Israel left Gaza in an attempt to create a lasting peace. It has not occupied Gaza or even had any sort of government role in Gaza since that time, and so, I don't deny the tragedy. Let's place the responsibility where it lies, and let's get our facts right. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leland Carlton. I would implore people to uh, look into human rights organization reports when they get their facts on history. Um, in the past five months, I've seen images that no human being I hope you guys are listening. Neil, Neil, where are you from? I hope that you're listening. In the past five months, I've seen images. Your name and address. My name is Leland Carlton. I'm from Lambertville, New Jersey. I don't feel comfortable giving Zionists and Nazis my address, but I would like to speak as an American in a democracy, and I'm going to take my three minutes. In the past five months, I've seen images of little dead babies and kids that no human being should have to see, and there's no excuse for it. Okay, I stood up here when we pledged to the flag for liberty and justice for all. And I would sincerely implore you to ask the question, does liberty and justice for all apply to just a, a segment of people, just a segment of people in America who have money? Or does it also apply to little Palestinian babies and kids that are getting bombed, getting their arms and limbs torn off? I would like you to ask that question. Do these Palestinian babies and kids that the Israeli state government calls little snakes and Amalek that they can mow the lawn on every couple years and disintegrate, I would like you to ask yourself, is that liberty and justice? I don't think it is. Torturing Palestinians, locking them up in an open air prison and concentration camp in Gaza for the past 20 years, raping their women, look it up in human rights reports if you want to talk about women's rights, raping little boys and children, tearing families apart, that's not my idea of liberty and justice. This is Nazi-like behavior and abuse of power, and I'll tell you that I despise Nazis. And my grandfather fought in the Second World War, risking his life to live in a land of freedom and justice while fighting Nazis, which I don't like and we don't like. Fortunately for him, he was able to enjoy liberty and freedom here in Little Silver, New Jersey. And I can't imagine that my grandfather would take kindly to seeing images of dead little Gazan babies in the thousands. We refuse to stand on the sidelines like the German civilians who stood on the sidelines while Jews were being deported on trains to concentration camps. We demand that our politicians start listening to their constituents, and we demand for a ceasefire now. What human being with a conscience justifies torturing children?
as a way to fight terror. That, my friends, is terror. We demand a ceasefire now. Stop the bull. Hi, my name is Gabriella Green. I'm with Howell. Um, if you'd like my full address, I could give it to you afterwards. That's good. Okay. Um, I am one of the hundreds of people who have been calling politicians every single day, almost every single day, to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. I have gone and spoken with some politicians in person as well, and they have given me empty platitudes, and it makes me feel upset because as a citizen, we are being taxed and our taxes are going to Israel to fund the bombings. The statistics of just Asbury Park, there has been $266,458 every year that goes out to Israel's weapons that could instead fund 31 households with public housing every year, 92 children receiving free or low cost healthcare, two elementary school teachers, 758 households with solar electricity produced for a year, seven students with their loan debt canceled, and 231,702 respira respirator masks for those who are low immunocompromised. There are also, um, I'm sorry, I'm, lost, I'm losing my place. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just extremely upsetting, um, knowing that our politicians are supposed to represent us and they haven't been representing us at all. We have been calling hundreds of people every single day have been calling our representatives and they don't listen to us. So that is why it is so imperative that, as you can see, everybody from all over the area has come here today because we believe that as citizens, we're hoping that you as a council instead of a, a politician who acts like they, they are untouchable and they don't really go near us. I mean, I've spoken to some of them and they act as though, you know, they are, they're listening to us, but then they go behind our backs and do the opposite of what they agreed with to our faces. So we're coming here today to ask that you stand alongside us, the people of your town, and demand a ceasefire in Gaza and demand the release of hostages on both sides of this war, of this genocide. There are over 3,000 people detained in Israel that are Palestinians. Unjust detainment. Before, before October 7th, and we want the release of all of these hostages, Israel and Palestinian alike. We're not anti-Semitic for demanding that. We're not anti-Semitic for demanding humanitarian aid, basic human rights for these people. And that's why I say we've come here to ask you to stand for what we believe in and what we hope you believe in as well. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Tom O'Dugan, and I'm a resident from uh, Middletown, New Jersey. I've been doing community work here in Asbury every Sunday uh, with Food Not Bombs for a few years now, so I feel connected to Asbury as well. I'm here to support the proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza. The highest estimates of civilian death in Gaza are that over 38,000 Palestinians have been killed by the IDF. Of those 38,000, 92% of them are civilians. The lowest numbers, which fully exclude male, adult male deaths, have a civilian rate of 62%. Over the last five months, Israel has made it abundantly clear by its actions that it is no regard for human life in Gaza, and these people are simply in the way of their greater goal. All of us that have watched the IDF commit these atrocities that have claimed thousands of lies, lives with a lack of restraint or any condemnation from the United States. Given that the US funds Israel with $3 billion per year and increased that number last year to $14 billion to pay for the weapons of this genocide, we all have stake in the efforts for a ceasefire. While I additionally support the release of Israeli hostages, the IDF's constant bombardment has done more to kill those hostages than to release them. It was a dipl diplomatic hostage exchange that released these hostages and provided a temporary ceasefire. What we need is an immediate, lasting ceasefire that will lead to unhindered humanitarian aid 
and hostage exchange deal that releases all hostages from Gaza and all hostages from Israel. If the federal government will not fight hard for a ceasefire, we must show our support through our local governments, such as yourself. Let Asbury Park lead the way, as so many of us are from different towns, and look to you as a beacon of hope. Please support the proposal for an immediate cease lasting ceasefire today. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Jess McCormick. I live in Lincoln, New Jersey. Can you repeat your name? Uh, Jess McCormick. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I live in your Lincoln, address. New Jersey. I, I'd rather not give my address, but I do live in Lincroft, New Jersey, and I have been um, a dweller of Asbury for years. Um, I'm an active figure in the local art and music scene. Um, I'm a little nervous, so if my voice is shaky, I do apologize. Um, there was something that was said before by someone who spoke, um, who wanted to bring some facts, and I was reminded of a book that I read um, very, um, very quickly after the events of October 7th, which is an event that I think shocked all of us. I don't think a single person in this room wanted any of those innocent people to die, and I know that that's still true today. None of them deserve it. But I read a book, and excuse the pronunciation, by Ilan Papa, who is a Israeli historian born in Haifa, um, who has written many books about the history of Palestine and Israel and all of their conflict over the last few years. Um, there was something that was mentioned that there was, excuse me if I'm paraphrasing, um, that there was not an established Palestine. But this is what he read or wrote in one of the first chapters talking about the background of the occupation. Palestine was not an empty land. It was not a desert waiting to come into bloom. It was a pastoral country on the verge of entering the 20th century as a modern society with all the benefits and ills of such a transformation. Its colonization by the Zionist movement turned this process into a disaster for the majority of the native people living there. He goes on to say that Zionist, uh, Zionism was a um, Christian colonial project before it was ever a Jewish one. And it was something that was presented as Again, I hate this phrase um, as a solution to the, the Jewish problem. Again, if I'm paraphrasing, I apologize. But the history of Israel is one that makes me very uncomfortable because I don't believe that any of the people there really know the full scope of what is going on. And I, my heart breaks for all of my Jewish friends whose um, families are fighting with them currently. My heart breaks for all of the people in this room who have been yelling and screaming for months, hoping for some kind of resolution, hoping for some kind of change. Um, and I only have 30 seconds left, but this personally, I'm, I'm low on the ladder here. But as a queer and trans person, I've been seeing a lot of legislation being passed for years, talking about how uh, we don't deserve basic liberties either, healthcare, the bathroom, anything. And Actions like this happened years ago, and now we're seeing the results of very, very violent policies like that. I'm afraid that it's going to happen here, and because I love my people here, and because I love people in general, I'm calling for a ceasefire. Free Palestine. Thank you. My name is Rabbi Label Shapiro. I live in Long Branch, prefer not to give my address publicly. I'm in Asbury almost on a daily basis to serve the Jewish community in Asbury Park. Asbury Park has a long, beautiful history of inclusion. I want to thank the council for your service. In the late 40s, the community in Asbury Park collected arms to support the great state of Israel. They sent ammunition to Israel to defend and fight for their survival. So I am sure that Asbury will continue to support the free state of Israel. A call for a ceasefire is a call for Israel to surrender to Hamas. That's what a call for a ceasefire is. The good news is that's not going to happen. The great people of this country 
support Israel. The great people of the city of Asbury support Israel. Israel will not surrender to Hamas. The only way to have safety and security for all people there is to free the hostages and Hamas to disarm, be dismantled, and then the people in Israel will be safe and free, and the people in Gaza will be safe and free only if Hamas is gone. The Hamas has called, caused death and destruction to the people of Israel. Hamas has caused death and destruction to the Palestinians in Gaza. And you know what? The more Palestinians that die, the happier Hamas is. Hamas gets strength, raises funds, and gets support from people when more of their people die and starve. So yes, the people of Gaza are suffering, and it's only because of the leadership of their people. The hateful killers of Hamas, modern day Nazis, that the people in that region are suffering. The Jewish people conclude their prayers three times a day with Osa Shalom Bim Romav. May God who brings peace in heaven bring peace down here. The Jewish people have been a people of peace from the beginning of time. And that's why we pray for peace for all mankind. But you cannot, you cannot surrender to people that hate and want death and destruction. So, um, long live the people of Israel. May God bless the people of Asbury Park. May God bless all good people and may we have peace. May he make peace down here for all mankind and let us say amen. amen. My name is Susan. I live in Freehold. I'll give you my address later. I manage a small business in Asbury Park on Banks Avenue. I don't understand what you people expect the city of Asbury Park to do about international politics. I just, I don't, what do you expect them to do? If you are going to call for a ceasefire, talk to Hamas. Hamas is the one who is saying no. They will not release the hostages. There's a one-year-old there, a one-year-old baby. They don't know if he's dead or alive with his four-year-old brother and his parents. Thank you to the two or three people who gave acknowledgement to hostages. There is a, a, a music festival, a peaceful, beautiful music festival and a Jewish holiday. Jewish youth and young adults are celebrating peace. And they were massacred, they were slaughtered. How do you not see these pictures? How do you not hear about young Israeli women who are attacked in their own homes, having their breasts cut off, and Hamas and innocent civilians playing football with women's breasts. You're so concerned with humanity. Do they not count? Do the men that were raped by men not count? Or is it because they're Jewish that they don't count? Your <coughs> efforts at peace are misguided. You are blaming the wrong people. Hamas is the elected government of Gaza. 80% of Gaza would elect them again. They have pledged to annihilate Israel. From the river to the sea means wiping out every Jew from the river to the sea. That's not peace. Sorry, you can wave your flag as much as you want. To me, it represents hate, and it re represents somebody who's looking to kill the empire, and that's not acceptable. I, I'm not speaking to these people because they're too busy waving their flags and they're not listening. I'm hoping the council will ignore this crap and stick to Asbury Park business because we don't belong in international politics here. I thank you very much for your time. Hi, my name is Gloria Peretti. I live at 305 6th Avenue, Asbury Park. I have lived here for approximately 10 years. I'm very sympathetic to both sides, but I'm not here for this. 
Um, I am here to talk about my property taxes going through the roof. Um, I have seen an increase over the, compounded over the last three years of approximately 30%, which is unsustainable. I am unfortunately considering leaving Asbury Park because if the taxes keep on going up like this, I will not, I have, I live in a single family residence. I do not have income from other sources. Um, I am imploring the council to look into ways to help the people that, uh, that have purchased here several years ago to do something about the increase in taxes. I understand that a big chunk of my taxes is because of the school budget. Other towns have much less administrative costs than Asbury Park. The standing of um, the um, The status of change uh, of the of the kids. Uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, the school funding is very um, high. The administrative costs are very high compared to other towns, which have less children, and they have higher grades. Um, in addition to okay, that's issue number one. Issue number two is I understand that all new development going up in the waterfront the redevelopment zone are getting pilot programs. I would like to know from the council, how long is the new pilot programs for? Some of the projects were 10 years. I heard that some buildings are having a 30 year pilot program, which is not fair to the people who live in town that are paying their full property taxes to have the new development come in and be subsidized, basically. We are no longer a blighted city. We are up and coming. People, people know about us internationally. We're not blighted anymore. I don't believe that, that new developments should be um, subsidized. And those are my concerns. Thank you. Okay. Stay there for a second. I'll answer some of your questions. Oh. Just because you had specific questions. So yes, the taxes are high and it's uh, mainly the Board of Education, but I do not blame the Board of Education. The state enacted a new law about eight years ago called the S2 bill. And it's like, nobody can even know the formula of S2. It's, a better hidden secret than the formula of Coca-Cola. One part of it is definitely enrollment. Besides that, it's a guess. Uh, so the board is crunched with the draconian cutbacks. And that's why last year's tax increase was so large. The previous years, the council did as much as we could try to make our budget flat or no increase, knowing that the board's was gonna be substantial. Last year, the city also had a small increase this year. The Board of Education is in the same position, if not worse than last year, where they're gonna lose 10 million instead of 8 million. We, the Board of Education has reached out and met with uh, Senator Gopal and other politicians. The city has been in support of the board to like other towns are getting loans, give the Board of Education a loan, let them pay them back over 10 years, where some towns aren't gonna pay it back whatsoever. Uh, we're thinking about anything and everything. And as far as the waterfront and pilots, a deal struck in 2002 between a previous council and a developer that we cannot overrule. It's a signed contract. So yes, any development in the waterfront redevelopment zone automatically gets a pilot and they are 30 years. 30 and, years. And that's something we can't, we, we can't you know, unilaterally change. So it's a signed contract. But we are cognizant that the taxes are high. We're cognizant about like people may lose their houses, more people may lose their apartments. And the only thing we know for sure the Board of Education's money is part of uh, the funding is enrollment. So if more people are forced out of apartments and we lose more kids, they're gonna get less money next year. 
So it's a vicious circle, a cycle that's a catch-22 to all of us. And we're totally aware of it. And the city manager and staff are looking at our budgets and seeing what we can do to reduce them as much as possible to help the, hopefully, we get help at the state level with the Board of Education budget. Or else last year's increase is going to look like nothing compared to this year's. So I hate to be brutally frank with you, but that's the truth. But we are working together to try to make sure that does not happen. So does that mean that next year's taxes are going to go up even more? If, if the Board of Education doesn't get some relief from the state, <laughs> yes. Dramatically more. Probably 25%. I, I'm not happy saying that, but I'm not going to lie to you either. I mean, we're aware of it. We're working together with them. You can do all you want over there. It's the facts. People don't like facts. I don't care. But, like, okay, any other questions you have, you can either get in touch with the city manager, finance, myself, any council member, and we'll try to explain it to you better. Just one more question about the pilot. Is it the 30-year pilot program, is that just for the new construction? Yes. But that's all that's going on, new construction in the waterfront redevelopment zone. Why well, is it construction in waterfront too? Right, <laughs> right. Been Any built construction since. in the waterfront. Like the bar, the bar was built 10 years ago. Did they get a 30 year pilot? Yes, so they have 20 years to go. For example, North Beach, I believe some of them has expired. Correct, right? because they had a different pilot. Some of those, some of those came back online. Most of Wesley Grove is off of pilots and they're back on conventional taxes also. So some of them were 15 and 20 years, they've expired, so you're right. North Beach and Wesley Grove, the majority of those are back on conventional taxes. So all new construction in perpetuity is going to have a 30-year pilot program? Is, is there no, a time limit? No, 30 years of the agreement of 2002. Yeah, that's right. Until what, until when? Until 2032. 2032, okay. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, and again, please, if you have any questions, you can go to the city website, call the finance office, call the city manager, you can call me. We'll try to give you as much information as possible. We, we know it looks like bad right now, and we're fighting to get as much money as we can from Trenton. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Felicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park. I'm not up here. Um, but I, I cry, this is how I live my life. People who know me know that I stopped watching television and reading the news um, over a decade ago, because I am a crybaby, and how I will, it'll, it'll cripple me. So I get up and I work with my hands, and I work in my community and things in which I can touch and build and, and grow, because all things, um, all politics are local. So on that behalf, I'm speaking to people who had left for this evening, and I'm gonna piggyback for the young lady who just spoke before me. And I'm asking um, to table the short term that's on the agenda tonight, because the people here need to be able to speak. The people who wanted to speak on it had to leave because they were overwhelmed. And I wanted to say that working with your hands and building a community that you want to see is important. Every, every tear that is shed is important. I, I pray every day. I pray all day long. If you stop and see me with my eyes closed randomly, it's because I'm saying a quiet prayer for somebody and something. So I'm praying for everyone. And also reminding that everything that we do from local up is important. Every, everything that we say, everybody who prays is important. So I'm on, a, on a behalf of the people who are here, right? I'm compelled to sit up there and to say some facts that we opted in to a pilot plan to assess every year, right? I often say some facts that there are people dying down the street. There are hungry people here every day. There are people dying of heroin and fentanyl. There's drug problems. There are mental health crises everywhere, right? There are jobless and hurt people, and hurt people hurt people. And hate breeds more hate, and breeds more hate, and breeds more hate. And there's people who live out of fear every day. 
right? Because they could be like me and they watch the news and be crippled, right? And, and, and in a ball and crying in tears. I had to walk out of here at least three times, right? For all the tears that are shed, all the blood that is on the ground. And then it takes me back to my center, which I came here for, right? Westside Community Center that was built with all hands, right? Our gymnasium is rumored to be built with Tuskegee Airmen and Mr. Hess from Hess Gas Station, the Jewish founder. We started right here in Asbury Park. Our history in Asbury Park is diverse and contradictory and um, outrageous. Right, because only a land built by a Methodist, blessed by a witch, could be, right, with over a hundred churches in a square mile. Okay, thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, John Shu, 209 West Shirley Avenue, uh, Edison, New Jersey. I uh, just want to speak a little bit about uh, resolutions. Um, you know, I, I wish when the Iraq war happened, I wish there was resolutions passed in towns all over the country uh, opposing the Iraq war. Uh, over a million Iraqis lost their lives because of that. Um, I spent a lot of time helping the nurses at Robert Wood Johnson, New Brunswick. Um, they were on strike for 131 days uh, because of, I would say, corporate greed. And uh, we passed. We passed 25, uh, 25 resolutions in towns uh, supporting the nurses and supporting their strike. Um, and I know, I know there's always a lot of resolutions passed, whether it's uh, state policy or, um, or, or just, uh, just a good, good, settlement, good sentiment. So there's nothing wrong with passing a resolution uh, supporting something that the town believes in as a reflection of the values of the town. And I'd just like to speak also about October 7th. Even, even before this, this issue didn't start before, start on October 7th. Um, there was so much that was happening. There were uh, periodic raids to homes of uh, Palestinians. Uh, they would be random, and it's a way to cause terror in the population. And, um, and this, this is done to uh, oppress people. Um, they, they also, there's also uh, apartheid, there's also separation, um, there's a, in the West Bank, it's called the apartheid wall. And the, um, a lot of Israelis, they have no idea what life is like for Palestinians over that wall. They have uh, two separate highways. Uh, there's a checkpoints. Um, in Gaza, if someone, well, in, in West Bank, if someone wants to, sorry, in Gaza, if someone wants to leave Gaza and to travel a little bit, just maybe seven miles, they need to allocate maybe six hours for that, to get through all the checkpoints. Um, two, just two years ago, uh, a very respected journalist, Shirin Abdu Akleh, she was murdered um, by the Israeli army uh, during a raid at the West Bank. Um, there's something called uh, mowing the lawn, and everyone needs to look that up, Google that, and that is periodic. Um, murdering of Palestinians to make sure the population does not get too high. There, there's, there's been a lot going on, and you know it's it's been it's been a tough time. I I have um, talked to my Jewish friends and friends that have gone on birthright, and uh, they do not. This history is not discussed. This history is very important to understand what is going on there, why there is um, resistance to such. Oppression, uh, but you know, I, I, I think the lives of Jewish lives are safer when oppression of Palestinians um, is, is ended. So that's why I support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lee Dim, and I am profoundly grateful and proud to say that I'm a resident of Asbury Park, and to be honest, of the United States. How lucky are we? Um, I am kind of nervous. I really don't have any speech prepared. I just have a lot in my heart and in my head, and I really just wanted to say something. Um, a big part of my family is Jewish. We lived in Israel for two years. I worked in the West Bank on peace initiatives with incredible Jewish and, and Muslim people. 
all over the, the area. And, and I can tell you it, it hurts to see the division here because I know a very important part of Jewish life is something called tikkun olam and tikkun alev. And what that means is to heal the world and to heal a heart. Um, and that is a profoundly important part of Judaism, right? And so what we're seeing now, I think, across the world is a lot of pain and a lot of misinformation. Um, we know if this happened, you know, Israel is the size of New Jersey. If what happened on October 7th happened in Asbury Park or New Jersey, gosh, we'd be overwhelmed with grief and with, with anger and all of this. The hard part, though, is that I feel like right now, and this is my opinion, I, I, it's just how I feel, I feel like um, those that are trying to protect the sanctity of Palestinian life are being considered anti-Semitic. And that's just really hard to see. You know, I have, I have four kids and I, ha I you know, and, and, and of course my kids have friends and so, and I work with a lot of young people and I'm, I'm, I'm excited and proud and hopeful for this younger generation because I think unlike what some people say, I, I see that they study, they do their research. Maybe it's easier now because they do have a phone, right? They can just, look, you know, hey Siri, what's the answer? So it's easier than when I was a kid, but, but they're reading back and they're looking at history and they're looking at making up their own minds and trying to understand. And all I wanna to say to everyone in the room is try to feel each other, try to understand each other's pain and try to find a way not to work against each other, but to hold hands. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what the future looks like. I just worry, uh, not only about the future of the Jewish state, because we really need that in the world, I believe. I, I don't think it's the right configuration as it stands by any chance, and I am absolutely not a fan of the leadership um, because I don't like it when 30,000 innocent civilians die. I just don't think that's okay. I don't know if a ceasefire is the right way to go, but we have to put some sort of, I think we have to put some sort of hold on the weapons that we you know, some sort of conditions on, on our support for Israel. I, I just, again, I don't know how that looks, but um, I would encourage everybody to not only, to try to not be as in each other's faces, but maybe write letters to your Congress people or think through, as opposed to a single word ceasefire, how, how can we incentivize others to, to work to get Hamas out of the mix so that Palestinian people can stop dying, right? How do we okay, stay partners with, it, with Egypt so that American forces are more safe. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, City Council. My name is Catalina Gagliotti. I live in Cliffwood, New Jersey. Um, so if you don't think this is a local issue, I would urge you that you're wrong. You heard from um, my colleague about the, about the money, the local money that's being used to fund this genocide. And then you heard about the unsheltered here in Asbury Park. Imagine what that money could do here if it stayed in our own community. History will remember that the United States supplied Israel with the bombs that murdered 30,000 plus Palestinians, the majority of whom are women and children. I'm a law school student at one of New Jersey's fine institutions. I study international law. I study international human rights law. The International Court of Justice has ruled that Israel is plausibly committing genocide. The U.S. is bending over back backwards to break its own laws. I encourage you to look up the Leahy Act and international laws. The Genocide Convention is a dual mandate. Not only do we have an obligation to prevent it to ha from happening, we have a duty to stop it. Instead, we're aiding it, abetting it with US tax dollars. I refuse to be complicit. At minimum, a ceasefire resolution is a wake-up call to our elected officials in Congress and in the White House who seem to have forgotten that they serve the interests of the people, not the lobbying groups that fund their campaigns and line their pockets. So I urge you, please, as a symbol for what this community stands for, let history show, let the record show that the city of Asbury Park, the city that's been a beacon for human rights in this local area, let the record show that we said no, not in our name. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm actually, my name is Gabriella Cucinara. I'm 209 Sixth Avenue. Um, I'm actually going to speak a little bit more about what Gloria spoke to and just want to um, implore the council to see if the waterfront, res waterfront redevelopment plan can't be modified. I've read through it and I've seen it has been, there's been modifications made to it over time. There's so many people here in the community that have been here for 20 years, 30 years, 
They're the people that actually built back Asbury Park. They bought houses that were really dilapidated. They actually took chances when, when they're, they're, the people didn't want to come to Asbury Park. And these are the same people now that are funding these condos, the people who are buying these condos that are a million, two million, three million dollars, that are second homes. So we are all subsidizing all these extremely rich people. The people on the west side that are barely making it are subsidizing these ultimate super, super rich people. I don't understand. I mean, I understand why North Beach was done. North Beach probably needed some sort of pilot, but that was a 10-year pilot. Somewhere along the line, something was modified to make it a 30-year pilot. I'll probably be dead in 30 years. My grandkids will be paying. I mean, we probably won't be here in 30 years, even if we could be here in 30 years, because I don't think a 25% increase in taxes is sustainable, probably for even you guys. I mean, it's crazy. And it's supporting a school that is not really working for the kids. It's just, it's the worst ranked school in the, in the state. There's something, just throwing more money at it is actually not working. So I just would ask that we look at something. It seems illegal that there is unfair taxation, that the rich are paying less, and the poor or the people that are established and retired are paying more. So I just would ask that, that you be creative and see if there's a way that, that you could re work with the developer and say, this is just not sustainable. People who are actually making the city, who care about the city, are being forced to leave. Thank you. Did anybody lose a backpack outside? It might be me already, yeah. Might be what? Huh? Can you go see if it's you? I will. So it's not. Oh, Kevin, you got it? It's outside. Yeah. Okay. okay. And no one knew it was. Okay. <laughs> Next time I will. Can I go? Or were you going to reply to her? <laughs> what? Were you going to reply to her? Or? Yes, thank you. Okay. We agree with you that 25% is not workable. Again, we're working with the Board of Education. We're working amongst ourselves. You can attend Board of Education meetings and express your displeasure there. Uh, as far as the tax, again, this was something passed by the state of New Jersey, not locally, not by the Asbury Park Board of Education. If you read in the papers, Neptune got clobbered. Asbury Park got clobbered, Long Branch got clobbered, uh, Red Bank got clobbered. Uh, so along the Jersey Shore, as much as the governor said, I'm fully funding education, we're losing another $12 million. So I, you know, don't believe what you read in the papers, but I would suggest attending a Board of Education meeting, asking the questions. I give you my word that everybody up here totally agrees with you. I can't afford a 25% increase, but that's what the numbers are projected to be right now. And that's like, you know, there's a magic wand at the end of the rainbow. And that's what we're hoping for. A couple of years ago, Senator Gopal was able to get a six to seven million dollars to stop an outrageous increase that year. Uh, we reached out to our local representatives, uh, Gopal, Peter Ball, and Donlin, and told them, like, great, we're going to lose the fabric that everybody moved into Asbury Park for. We're going to lose the diversity. Long time residents are going to be, it's, it's going to be gentrification on steroids. There's no question about it. So we're all concerned about it. We all want to stop it. We're doing our best and we'll keep you abreast. Any questions, feel free to call. I'm just going to do two quick answers, Gabrielle. The amendments that you do see in the agreement, the only way it's amended without litigation is by consent. And I can assure you the developer is not going to consent to get rid of pilots. And the um, decision for pilots was litigated and the city lost. So it was litigated, I'm going to say 2011 uh, or 12, but I can get you that decision. Thank you. And thank you. Of course. Hello, Council. My name is Emily Nevins. I uh, am not comfortable uh, announcing my address, so I will give it to you after. Just give, um, us, just give us a tag. Oh, sure. 
Red Bank, New Jersey. Hey. During lockdown, I was a medical assistant and I worked in cardiology and on the weekends, I was working the immediate cares helping with COVID testing. I didn't survive a pandemic to be complicit in a genocide that we are witnessing every day. I want to first thank the council for taking the time to listen to me and my colleagues for what we are asking of you to consider on voting. It's important that this resolution comes to your attention and that it is voted on in the favor of a ceasefire now because of current New Jersey legislation that is affecting our local government and our state government. S1923 prohibits investment of pension and annuity funds by state and companies that boycott Israel and Israeli businesses. I am an American citizen and I do not want to be living in a country that is signing a Pledge of Allegiance or an oath to a foreign entity that is doing well with my tax dollars, murdering children, weaponizing a religion that has already had a Holocaust. I want to address those of that denomination very quickly. If you want to call me anti-Semitic, you're a liar. I was raised Catholic. My family on both sides has strong ties with Jewish people. From learning their recipes to assisting Jewish neighbors to prepare their homes for the Sabbath, to being welcomed into Jewish temples, to witness my middle school friends perform their bar and bat mitzvahs. I know the book of David. I know the book of Jacob. I know the book of Ruth and I know of Rachel. My family leaves stones on tombstones for our loved ones and we leave a chair open at family events for Elijah. I know the loving, welcoming embrace of the Jewish people and I know Judaism is not this violence. It is the occupation of a government that is weaponizing your history. I know you are in pain and I know that it is hard having to deal with a cognitive dissonance of what you have been taught. You are part of one of the most loving doctrines this world has witnessed. We share a book. For my teaching, when I was raised Catholic, I'm no longer practicing. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness of my sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There were some, unfortunately, some lies that were said to you to counsel, and I just want to tell you that on October 7th, footage and communication audio was intentionally hidden and deleted. This can be viewed on the Jerusalem Post. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let, me, let me just say, I see some people in line that have already spoken. You get one shot to speak. So if you're, if you're already spoken, you're not going to get a second chance. Okay. Well, you're not the only one. Yeah, I've got my heart. Okay. And understood. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Grace Rotunda, 1513 Park Avenue, Asbury Park. And I just want to say that after Hamas did invade Israel, Benjamin Notanhu, I always say his name wrong, I apologize, got on national TV and said, kill them all. He never differentiated between the civilians and Hamas. And I am not pro-Hamas, I am not anti-Semitic, but it is a genocide that does need to stop. Mm. Yeah, you're welcome. Also, I'd like to know where the IDF was while Hamas ravaged Israel for over seven hours. Where was the IDF? They never showed up and he will not answer as to where they were. He said, that's a question for later. It is a question for now. It's something that really needs to be thought about and there needs to be a permanent ceasefire, not a six week ceasefire as Israel has proposed. Okay, now I do have a question for you because Airbnb did send out a letter to everyone involved with Airbnb that Asbury Park is looking to come into their private accounts. Is that true? Do you know anything about it? Say the question again. Airbnb sent a letter to everyone in Asbury Park concerning their accounts that the town is looking to come into their private accounts and investigate what is going on. And I'm wondering, did you receive complaints from people? Do you know, yeah. do you know anything about it? No. 
Airbnb, Airbnb is not coming in your account. The We have made minor, minor changes to the short-term rental ordinance as a result of abuse of the short-term rental ordinance. The changes to the short-term rental ordinance are on our website, highlighted in red, but what you're gonna see in those highlights is that it's basically about primary residency because guess what? People are buying houses in Asbury Park and short-term renting and not living in them. Right. So okay. you are not allowed to do that in Asbury Park. This is to protect the housing stock of Asbury Park and slightly slow down the gentrification on steroids that we're seeing. So we are not, no, what you have read is incorrect. I've spoken to Airbnb. I've explained to them this ordinance has been in effect for eight years. The changes that we have made are in red on our website. I don't know why they're fear mongering. Okay, well, obviously they were. Thank you for that. I have one other question concerning taxes. I understand that the school district takes up a, a huge amount of taxes. However, I'd like to know if it's true that the police department, everyone got a new vehicle. No. That no. also is not true? No, Guys, did you get a new car? It's not, even, <laughs> it's not even close to being true. <laughs> It's not even close, like one third of the police department got new vehicles. We have 95 right. police officers. We don't have 95 cars. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Luna Venegas. I can't hear your, your name and address. Luna Venegas. Thank you. I'm a resident of Somerset County. Um, I hate public speaking, but I feel that I'm <laughs> compelled to share my thoughts. Growing up, I was deeply impacted by learning about what happened in the Holocaust, witnessing all the atrocities committed against millions of Jews simply because they were Jewish. They endured starvation, beatings, and torture. I've had the privilege of meeting Holocaust survivors and listening to their stories firsthand. As an innocent child, I believed that such horrors would never happen again because we learned from history. However, recent events have shown that history tragically repeated itself. It pains me to hear that hate still thrives in this world. How can we turn a blind eye to the suffering Palestinians? and claim that it is not our concern. As an American, I am aware of the role of my country and the impacts that is committed on so many countries around the world. And we always say, oh, poor them. Oh, not our problem. But we're the ones who are doing it. We must acknowledge our responsibility. Our tax dollars comp contribute to what's going on in Palestine. And it's important that we stand up for the rights of Palestinians and advocate for their freedom. To the river to see. May God free Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, could everyone hear me? Yeah. All right. Hi, my name is Allie Wilson. I'm speaking from Belmar. Council, thank you so much for letting us be here today. And thank you for meeting with Matt and I the other day when you called us to learn a little bit more about why we are here. I'm very proud to be a part of an amazing organization that focuses on our community here in Asbury Park, Long Branch, Lakewood, and soon Red Bank. I'm really proud of being a part of Food Not Bombs. So Food Not Bombs, if those of you aren't familiar with us, we hand out food every Sunday, no questions asked, right over there at the train station. And you might wonder, why the name Food Not Bombs? Well, why are bombs dropping when people are starving? Why are our taxes going towards bombs dropping on families across the world when there are people across the street who cannot feed their families? Why are we paying, on average, $86 per taxpayer to fund a war halfway across the world when we just got done handing out food over in Long Branch? 
Now, you might ask yourself, okay, we're here talking about a global issue. What does this have to do with Asbury? Why are we trying to ask for a ceasefire resolution to the city council of Asbury Park? The global is now local, whether we like to admit that or not. And you're hearing everyone here move to tears talking about an issue that not only impacts us because we are human, but impacts us because we are watching people starve in live time. How many people in this room have watched starving children go across their feeds on social media lately? How many of you have seen children so thin that you could count their rib cage? How many of you have been physically affected by seeing these images, watching your mental health, watching people that you don't even know go through a starvation that is caused by your tax dollars? That is why we are here today, and that is why we want to pass this ceasefire resolution here in Asbury Park, because we have a loving, beautiful community that is passionate and caring for others. And what is happening globally is happening locally. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew Sigmund, Asbury Park. Uh, first, uh, great job in the St. Patty's Parade. That was pretty fun, right? <laughs> Good job, Council. That was great. Thank you very much. Uh, didn't have anything planned. Didn't know this was going on. Here I am. Uh, I'm Jewish. I'm also pro-Zionist. However, before we get you know all flags, you know this is a horrible situation. It's terrible on all sides. I raised my hand because I don't like seeing death and brutality. Nobody should. Um, but to also think that Israel wasn't going to retaliate is also kind of questionable. Um, just to go around, why, where was the IDF that day? So that was Simchas Torah. That was a celebratory day on a Saturday. So the IDF, they, they, they weren't doing anything. Um, you know, we're very reactionary as people. You know, I thought we were getting towards peace before October 6th, October 7th. And then October 7th happens, and we're clearly not. Um, it would have been great if we had this kind of support prior to that. Um, you know, I think we all want coexistence. Uh, when we hear river to the sea, I mean, where, where would the Jews, where would the Jews go? Where would, where would we go? I mean, so I'm a Holocaust, I'm a Holocaust survivor like some of the other speakers here. And, you know, I, I feel a little bit differently. I feel that, you know, uh, it, you know, my grandmother was a survivor. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a spawn of her. If, what would happen if that happened again? Where, where would I go? Where would I turn to? You know, I, I agree, 30, 40, however many lives, six million Jews, death is death, it's awful. But I also think we need to, you know, how can we end this right now? I mean, is, is Hamas really the best leadership for Palestine? Are they really the ones that are gonna lift them up? I, I wanna lift them up. I wanna make Gaza, not me personally, but I mean, I, I think we all want to. It should be beautiful, it should be Dubai. Let, let's, let's make it a successful place where, where kids can thrive and not, and not learn to hate their neighbor. I visited Israel, they don't, they don't hate we don't, we don't, they don't hate. There's no, I, I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself. I'm not talking for about your historical facts and my historical facts, but I was there, there, there wasn't an idea to hate the other. Um, I think we're led by lies. I think all of us collectively on both sides. And I think that, I, I, I think there's so much common ground, the passion on both sides of, 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 of life on both sides. If we could use that to come to the table, I thought we were doing it. I thought prior to October 7th, I thought I was quiet, maybe something was going on. Saudi Arabia was looking to try to make peace. You know, it's a, it's a very crazy conflict. And yes, it is awful to see life on both sides. You know, I support Israel because I'm a Jew and I'm, I'm like grandmother died in the Holocaust. I don't want that to happen again. And I totally understand the plight of the, of the Palestinians and statehood. We need to find a solution. Ceasefire now, it's a great idea and I believe in it. We also have hostages. What can we do to stop it? What can we do to stop people dying in general? Um, I respect everyone's passions. It was great to hear everybody tonight. And I thank you and I wish for peace and I wish for coexistence. Thank you very much. Hello, um, I was not planning on speaking. Okay, um, so my name is Kimberly Obi. I now live in Ocean. Um, I was actually pushed out of Asbury because I couldn't afford to live there. Uh, but I did live in Asbury for seven years before that happened. I felt compelled to come up here because the man who just spoke 
uh, was very aggressive to us on the street as we were hanging our, you know, our updated information. He talks about wanting peace. He wasn't very peaceful to us. Um, you know, if you want to have an open dialogue, you know, we're here, but I just felt compelled to come up here. There's a lot of emotions here today. Basically, <laughs> People don't want to see innocent people dying, and I don't know why that is so hard to wrap your head around. No matter what your religion is, no matter what you believe in, I urge people to actually educate themselves on the history of Palestine and Israel, because I feel like a lot of people in this room may not even be that as educated, including myself. Um, admittedly, I never spoke out about Palestine until October 7th, and I've done a lot of uh, research since then. I think doing research is very important. We are, if you have a phone, if you have access to a library, it is very easy to do research and find correct information. Um, I have had such a hard time um, mentally physically these last few months because um, it is so incredibly hard when you, yeah, we're seeing in live time what's happening in Palestine. It, it is literally, it, it has affected me so much. I, I don't even want to go out and hang out with my friends because I, I have this constantly on my head, you know, what is happening over there and, and how it seems like, what can we do to stop it? And this is why we're here, to talk to you and to say that local politics do not influence a larger picture is wrong. It is wrong. That is ignorance. Things always start from the bottom, always. Um, please, please consider you know, our resolution for a ceasefire. We want peace. We want peace. Thank you. Hi, uh, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. Uh, I could talk a little bit about uh, Hassan is a terrorist group, in case anybody doesn't know it. And they're taking over Palestine. I know this because I happen to be a full Syrian. And my aunt was a Palestinian. And she had seven children in Palestine. So I know all about it ever since I was a kid, 1947. So I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but you have to know that what that group is. And then, if you understand it, then you can have peace. But not, not with a group like that. They go around killing people. They enjoy it. And it, you have to understand that. But I, I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about Carol Torres. I didn't get a chance to talk about her before, but she was a friend of mine from 1972. And we were good friends. And as Amy knows, she was a gay girl. And, <laughs> and we never, ever had a discussion about that. We were always good friends, and she happened to be the first one to be the victim of eminent domain, in case anybody doesn't know that. She owned the Albion Hotel, She had, and then she changed the name of it, but it was an all-woman's hotel, and they took it away from her. Eminent domain is not a very pretty thing, as you all know. But Carol was a good friend, and we had, at that time, in the 70s, we had six gay bars, we had a gay restaurant, which we ate at every Wednesday night, with spaghettis and meatballs, and then we had a gay movie. So I don't want to ever hear in this room that we are none, uh, that we're against anybody, because we're not. 
We are very peaceful people. And I don't know who all these people are, but they should come to a meeting about the border, if anything. We're getting run over with the border, as you know. But that's about it. And if some lady asks where all the money goes, I'd like to tell her, well, part of it went to a Black History dinner, and that's it. Thank you, Rita. Thanks, Rita. You go ahead. My name is Hana. I I live in Lakewood Township. I, can you yes. Can we have silence, please? My name is Hannah. I live in Lakewood Township. I came here tonight purely for a community health project. I'm a senior in nursing school at Georgian Court University. I came here tonight to learn about public health. I didn't know that I came here tonight to find out uh, that there are so many confused Americans who live right near me. I have a lot of family in Israel and I personally spent a lot of time in Israel. And I've seen all sides of the conflict. I don't think there's a black and a white right and wrong, but I do know what's right and wrong when I see pictures of girls my age in bloody pants because they were raped by a music festival. I know there's a right and wrong, when I see pictures of babies murdered in their home, I know there's a right and wrong when I went to visit Israel and I see thousands of fresh graves of people murdered while living their lives. And only here in the news about the thousands of dead Palestinians, nobody remembers the thousands of dead Jews. I went to Israel this December to check if my family is safe and to see my country. When I was on the way home, everyone in the airport was discussing the things they saw and didn't see. One of the women who made the biggest influence on me is a doctor who's volunteered many times in Palestinian um, areas. She works for, like she does aid for, for poor children um, and church them. And her cu coming back from that trip and telling me that she could never ever do that again. The things she saw on that trip, the things we all saw. I, I could go on and list it, but words are not coming to me now. All I'm saying is if you do your research and you look at what's actually happening, not just what the media is pushing in your face, then you can see that both sides are hurting. You can see the Palestinians who are coming forward and talking about their abuse in the hands of Hamas. I have been to many mixed neighborhoods in Israel where Arabs and Jews live peacefully together. However, in any Arab exclusive neighborhood in Israel, there are massive signs warning Jews not to enter. As a Jew, there are parts of Israel I am not allowed to enter. There is no part of Israel that an Arab is not allowed to enter. They are the ones who make the segregation, not us. They're the ones who hate us. We want peace and we are willing to live along with them. And I'm sorry that people who have never been there and don't know the facts think that they can say that terrorists should be rewarded for their acts of violence. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Uh, Regina Flimlin, 506 8th Avenue, Asbury Park. I came to talk about the, uh, the vehicles for the beach, and I was so surprised. So welcome, all you folks from out of town and in, in town, and it's great to see activism, right? Things do change with activism. Is there a council in the state of New Jersey now considering a resolution anywhere? Yes. yes, there is. Interesting. I was not aware of that. Um, so for the record, I don't agree with war. I've had five uncles in World War II, a father, 
and uh, a grandfather on Normandy Beach. So I come from a family that has served, and they all say the same thing when asking, so do you ever want to talk or discuss what went down? And they say, that's in the past. It'll never be repeated. And if I was ever to be called for arms again, I would not carry a weapon. I would just carry the dead. And one of them did do that. So I'm, I'm for peace and resolution. But I'm also for uh, cleaning my feet up on 7th Avenue Beach. <laughs> so there's two showers there, and there's no place to clean your feet, like the surfer's beach. And the reason I bring this to your attention is because I suspect there are additional funds for the beachfront. And if there are, I think we should look at the fact that there's a playground there, and a lot of parents love to let their children run and have a good time in the sand. Very understandable and great exercise. I'm all for it. Um, but there's no place for the children to wash off their feet unless they stand in the line for the shower. Or if you're just coming off the beach, there's no place to just wash your feet unless you stand in the line for one of two showers, yeah? So that's just a consideration and something I'm pointing out as a resident. And 25% uh, tax increase, yeah, been here 20 years, had a business here successfully for 13. It's, it's a tipping point, I think, for a lot of us. I share that. No, no, I agree with you about the taxes, and believe me, that number is not coming from the city. That's coming from the Board of Education. I understand. As far as the showers on the beach, we agree with you, and they're going to be added this year. And right now, there's no showers anywhere because it's still winter time. If the board was turned on, we'd have broken and frozen pipes. Yeah, but, no, no, no. I'm not asking okay. to turn on, but I'm saying if you have additional funds for the waterfront we're, we're development. Looking. You're, on the you're, beach. You're reading our minds. That's oh, great. When we had a yeah. beach committee meeting, we said, let's add them. So they okay. should be added, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. That's one of our additions for this year. Okay. Great. Thanks okay. so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Hi. Uh, you can call me M. I'm not giving out my address. I live in Newark. So I'm just, you Your know, name? Coming here. Uh, you can call me M because I'm not giving out my personal Pam? information. This is being live streamed. Can't hear what your name is. Oh, you can't hear me? No. Pam. Pam? No, M. Like M the letter M. M. Emma. No, just call me M. M. Like the letter M. M. Your name is M. Yeah. Okay. Is that an issue? Uh, so I'm just coming up where? here because I'm from Newark. Okay. I'm a uh, basically a tourist in Asbury Park. I come here every year. You guys have the best beaches. I'm not going to lie. I come here with my sister and my mom. We love it here. But now that I come here every year, I see the poverty in this town. I see the, the, the gentrification of this town. It's honestly like appalling. Like, what are you doing to prevent that from happening? Anything? Because it's really sad fact that nobody's going to be able to live here come, let's say, 2025, 2026. You want to raise the taxes by 25%? <coughs> Who's going to be able to afford that? None of your residents are. They won't be here. Um, so that's why I'm here to call for a permanent ceasefire. Like, you guys need to get your act together. And all I really want to leave is with you guys need to actually look up the facts. Look up the Nekba of 1900s. That's an actual fact that happened before October 7th. Look at October 2nd. How about 2013? How about 2018 when they had the great return? Like you guys want to sit here and say Hamas started it? This wasn't started five months ago. This started years ago. And now you see why we come here. Because we care and we want to see those people helped, not hurt. And it's disgusting that none of you are even like looking up. You're looking at your books. You're not paying attention. Like, uh, that's it. Thank you. I yield my time. Anybody else like to be heard before we close the public portion? You can get up to the microphone. You haven't spoken already, have you? Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Prixi. Uh, I am from Monroe Township in Middlesex County. Okay. I'm not from Asbury Park, uh, but uh, I come every summer. I come to the beach in Asbury Park, and I love it. And when, whenever I come, you know, I see kids uh, swimming at the beach, people playing with their families, and it's it's like you know an incredible place for families to come and enjoy from New Jersey and other area. And 
when I see Gaza, people in Gaza cannot enjoy their sea. They cannot go more than three nautical miles from the sea, even though it's their homeland, it's their sea. They cannot, uh, if they go accidentally go beyond the three nautical miles, they will be shot at by the Israeli military. So um, what I wanted to bring attention is um, a lot of people today spoke about ceasefire that existed before October 7th. And uh, I wanted to cl clarify that what we are asking you to do is not the ceasefire that existed before October 7th. Uh, you know, before October 7th, people in Palestine did not have control over their land, their airspace, air or their sea space. They, they had to go through checkpoints in their own ha homeland. They had to, they were separated highways and separated neighborhoods in their own homeland. That's not what we are asking you to do. They, uh, before October 7th, in 2023, hundreds of Palestinians were killed before October 7th. There was no ceasefire before October 7th. And we are not asking you us to take us back in time. We, want, we are asking you to take us forward and bring a real, like talk about real ceasefire. The people, in, uh, the people we elected, that the people we take, pay our taxes, uh, you know, salary for in the Congress, we have called them hundreds of times from New Jersey, from across the country. They are not listening to us. And what we are asking you to do is take our voice to them because you are closer to the community here. So we are ask, hoping that you will listen and you know, take our voice to the Congress so this, we can actually have a real, a real ceasefire. Thank you. Move to close. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public participation portion is now closed. Thank you. Now, if, if you're going to stay for the rest of the meeting, we have to conduct the regular business. But if you want to, we'll give you a couple minutes if you want to leave or if you want to hear. I don't care. It's boring stuff. You can stay and listen to it. But we're going to have to ask for like silence. So if you're going to talk, you're better off taking it outside. Again, we ask you to please take it outside. Find the chambers, please. Go ahead. We're now on to the minutes. I have the executive meeting and regular meeting minutes of February 28th, 2024, and the executive and emergency meeting minutes of March 5th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn has left the room. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on consent agenda are presented collectively to the city council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are considered to be routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by one or more council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. 
On consent agenda tonight, we have resolutions 2024-149 through 2024-151 and 2024-157 and 158. These include resolutions <laughs> these include resolutions appointing members to the Code Enforcement Quality of Life Committee. The appointees are Stephanie Ackerman and Inaya Preston, with a term to expire January 15, 2025, and the appointment to the Housing Authority, Kyle Whedon, with a term to expire April 30th, 2028. Do I have a motion for consent? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2024-152, resolution approving payment of bills. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-153, a resolution authorizing the inspection of an influent pump at the wastewater treatment plant. Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-154, resolution authorizing the annual renewal of vector scheduling software for the fire department. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-155, resolution of the City of Asbury Park releasing the performance bond for 545 Lake Avenue, Block 3105, Lot 4.01. Moving. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-156, resolution of support of a grant award extension from the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Asbury Avenue Bikeways Project. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-159, resolution authorizing the purchase of two new Kubotas with Hopper for the Beach Department. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-160, resolution authorizing payment to air systems maintenance for additional work needed to the chilled water pumps at the municipal building. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-161, resolution authorizing an annual HVAC preventative maintenance agreement with Air Systems Maintenance. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to ordinances for introduction. I have ordinance 2024-5. This is the 2024 cap rate ordinance with a public hearing date of April 4th, I'm sorry, April 10th, 2024. Who is it? Joe. You, you, you don't have to say anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is just the okay, intro. If you want to, go ahead. It's just the intro. You're here, here, it's just the introduction. Go ahead. Uh, the, cap, the cap rate ordinance is required to be adopted every year before we do our budget. Um, it allows us to go up to 3.5% of our operating budget. Um, last year we were at 47 million, we'd be up to 49 at the max. Doesn't mean we're going to be doing that. That's just the max and the state requires this. Is this is something we do every year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Do I have a motion to introduce 2024-5? Move to introduce. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2024-6, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing Chapter 30, entitled Land Development Regulations of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, as well as the redevelopment plans for the scattered site STARS and Washington Avenue redevelopment area regarding accessory dwelling units with a public hearing date of March 27, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 20, I'm sorry, Ordinance 2024-7, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing Chapter uh, 13, entitled Property Improvement and Neighborhood Preservation Property Maintenance Code of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, in order to establish a new section thereof entitled Accessory Dwelling Units with a public hearing date of March 27, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move yes. it. May I have a second? Second. second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to ordinances for second reading public hearing. I have ordinance 2024-4. 
Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending and supplementing Article 13-1300 entitled Short-Term Rentals of Part 2 Rental Property of Chapter 13, Property Improvement and Neighborhood Preservation, Property Maintenance Code, the Code of the City of Asbury Park. Right, do you provide a brief overview on this? Sure. Actually, I think Deputy Mayor Quinn already uh, gave a very good summary of it in her comments during the public comment period. But Basically, um, these are minor amendments to the existing short-term rental ordinance that was adopted about seven or eight years ago um, that were recommended by staff who are actually um, enforcing and implementing the ordinance in order to ensure that those who are short-term renting their properties are actually residents and primary residents of the city of Asbury Park. And um, we have found that there are some who are gaming the system, and hopefully with these new amendments, it will help to cut down on that. Thank you, Fred. May I have a motion to open up the public hearing on Ordinance 2024-4? Move to open. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing on Ordinance 2024-4 is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone. Your comments may be regarding Ordinance 2024-4 only. Um, hello, yes. Um, for the people who left um, Zumba and uh, ASEAN family that came but couldn't stay. They had questions on, um, they received a letter also saying, is there any part that will attach to the personal people's account um, for the short term rental? And um, also the exact um, portion that targets outside town and would it, is there any mindful or unmindful, that's what I'm looking for, harm that could be to um, locals, uh, residents of the, the properties. So, is that, was that clear enough? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the is best there, I can in the heat because I'm, I'm dying up here. I'm, I'm hot flashing galore up here. So let, let me be clear. There, 95% of this ordinance is not being changed. 5% of this ordinance is being changed. And the 5% of it is related to proving this is your primary residency. And the reason that we are buckling down on proving that it's your primary residency is because we continue to get people buying houses, saying they live here, never living here, and then short-term renting it all year. So I spoke to Airbnb. Any complaints that Airbnb sent me have been in the ordinance for eight years. So if you're currently short-term renting, you've dealt with 95% of this ordinance. And unless you're gaming the system, this ordinance is gonna have zero to no effect on you. But it is absolutely going to affect the people who are short-term renting, and this is not their primary residence. Okay, but specifics. Um, because one word, because one word can change a whole context of a contract. So, is there uh, specifically any part that will go after or address people's personal finance accounts? I didn't read it, so this is a question related it, to someone else. There is not, and and this ordinance affects short-term rentals, not short-term rentals in the Southwest, not short-term rentals on the East Side, short-term rentals across, across the, board. the board. It does not affect sections of the city in different ways. The ordinance applies to short-term rentals, and again, if it is your primary residence, this is going to have absolutely no effect on you. If it is not, this is absolutely going to affect you. Okay, and is there any... Um, um, thing that could actually hurt a, a person. Because again, one word could change um, the whole context of it. So I I'm getting- I don't believe so, Felicia, I don't believe so. Okay, um, Fred. Yes, that's correct, there, there's, there is nothing that Can would I hurt anyone okay. who is- It's open. It, it, there's nothing that's gonna hurt anyone who was a primary resident of Asbury Park who was short-term renting their property. Okay, thank you. What's a short-term rental? Less than 30 day. days. Less than 30 Rita. days. Less than 30 days. How many? Less, Less than, than 30, 30 days. days. Short-term rentals apply for any unit that you want to rent out less than 30 days. So if somebody wants to do 4th of July weekend, if somebody wants to do a common one to see here now, that, that's where these come into play, okay? All right, let's see what you can do to dinner with you. Move to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing on Ordinance 2024-4 is now closed. May I have a motion to adopt 2024-4? Move to adopt. Second. Thank you. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. 
Yes. No one has anything else. I will take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night.